This is a serious jazz guitar scales workout exercise lesson. This is part two of a little series, maybe just two part series. I might add more to it uh, as well, but this is how to go deep on actually changing keys while we're playing scales, while we're improvising melodies, while we're coming up with original music over chord progressions that change keys, especially in jazz chord progressions. So we're, we are working on the tune Solar by Miles Davis, and you can do the same process over any tune, any chord progression. Check out the part one video, link in the description if you wanna see that. This should be valuable on its own, but if you actually wanna practice through these things and do all the steps, you wanna do those uh, original uh, initial exercises first and then come and do these here we're getting into the changes of the tune we're playing scales we're playing melodies we're improvising actually improvising not just memorizing something not just uh, jumping to places that we remember in scales we're actually learning how to connect the scales literally anywhere we are in the scale or on the fretboard we have to do certain exercises to do that so here we go uh, deep dive on this uh, skill set that is so critical to be able to do if we want to improvise over jazz I'm Jared Borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com where I teach musicianship skills for guitarists so we can express ourselves more freely, improvise over chord changes, uh, work on arrangements, understand the fretboard, understand theory, everything we need to really uh, feel fulfilled as musicians. Let's outline this lesson for you, and then we're going to dive into the actual exercises. This is didactic stuff, stuff you can practice and get the skills down for yourself, and anyone can do it. And at the end, I'm going to have two really critical bonus tips for you. One, for how to kind of take a step back and get started if you're finding some of these exercises really difficult. There's a way to kind of create stepping stones and baby steps that really make it manageable for anyone. So I'll give you a kind of how to get started from the very beginning step uh, tip at the end, and also how to avoid one of the main kind of pitfalls and traps that people get into when they work on this stuff. So first, we are going to review just some of the main points from the last video from part one. Even if you've watched that this is going to be important just for us to say here's what we've kind of set up and then we are going to go over what I call the rules of the game we're going to list a bunch of rules what I usually uh, the word I usually use is parameters we want to set parameters for our exercises so when we're practicing we know exactly if we got it right or if we got it wrong so we're working on um, actual control and yes, in real music, it's we want to just let things go and let things be weird and make mistakes and have pleasant surprises. But in our practicing, in our skill training, we want to set the rules. So we're going to define so crystal clear what are the things we're trying to do. Um, and that makes it really fun, too. And it sustains our interest for longer. Uh, we don't get bored or walk away from practicing because we think, oh, I got to get this challenge. Right. If like you're playing a video game and you die and you're like, I'm going to start again and try to get past there. And it's not easy, but you want to do it because you know what the goal is. So that's what we're going to set up for ourselves. And then I'll just give you a series of exercises. We're going to have up to 10 different exercises that are really clear, and I will demonstrate all of them. And if you do them, you will skyrocket your skills in terms of being able to hear, see, feel, keys changing and the scale note selections of those keys while improvising over tunes that change keys a bunch. Uh, let's just dive into the meat of the lesson. All right, so to review, here's what we did last time, and here's kind of what we want to set up as our foundation before going into the more advanced exercises over the tune. So last time we just reviewed the melody. So if you're working on a tune, don't avoid the melody. You can go deep dive on the melody anytime, but get a surface level understanding of what it is, how to play it. Just get um, a little bit of it so you know what you're working on, so you know how it sounds. You'll see in this lesson at the end, near the end, I will show how when we come back to looking at the melody after working through all the scales, we will see the melody with more clarity because the melody is coming from the exact keys that we are working on. So the solar melody. <laughs> That is the melody for Solar, the Miles Davis tune that we're working through in this lesson. Again, I take these principles and exercises and apply it to any tune. You don't have to work on Solar. It's just a great tune that I love that changes keys a bunch in a short amount of time so we can work through these exercises. So we reviewed uh, the melody last time and that's something you want to do. Then in the last video, we uh, looked at what are the scales that we need. We just analyzed what are the scales that we need for this progression. So I'll tell us really quickly what we decided on. We decided on... 
uh, C, and I say decided on because sometimes there's multiple options, uh, C melodic minor, then these four measures are F major, these three measures are E flat major, these two measures are D flat major, and then this is C harmonic minor, the last measure at the end there. So those are the scales that uh, we are doing for these two lessons, at least on Solar. Exercise number two, in the last lesson, we found those scales as close as possible to each other on the fretboard uh, within one position. So we found C harmonic or C melodic minor here. And then we found uh, F major. Then E flat major. All in the same position. Then D flat major, tiny shift. And then C harmonic minor. All right there. Not that we don't want to play other places on the fretboard, but how are we going to unlock connections all over the fretboard if we don't know how to just find the closest next quote unquote good note that smoothly connects from key to key in one position? We don't want to just jump to some familiar physical shape. So this is how to how to really work on that stuff. Next, we covered only two more things, just reviewing here. It's important that we do that. Exercise three from the last video, we played each scale up and down in time flawlessly, 10 times in a row each. That's the exercise. If we don't get that core foundational, just can we play the scale up and down each of them 10 times in a row? We don't really want to move on to too much deep dive stuff uh, in the tune because we just need to know the scale that well. And then the last exercise in the last video was that we played those scales up and down through the order of how they change in the song. This is getting into the feeling and the sound of the of the tune of the progression, and it actually feels like the sound the song, even if we're not quite in time with the song yet. So that's our foundational stuff that we covered uh, in the last lesson. Again, link in the description to that video if you want to see it. The point of all of that is is we need to know the scales really really well and have a place mapped out for where we are going to play them. Now we're ready to get musical with them. It's going to be really fun. Let's go to the next section. Okay, ready for this? This is the list of rules, what I'm calling the rules of the game. And it very much does feel like a game when we set up the parameters in this way. So these are our exercise parameters for at least the beginning of it. Then we're going to tweak the rules a little bit as we get to the more advanced versions of this exercise. Uh, the whole point of this is something that we uh, that I was introduced to as the continuous scale exercise. Can you just keep playing a scale, keep playing, keep playing, and change the scale appropriately right where you are and right where you are already were? and change keys and change keys and just play through. That's the basis of being able to really let loose and play music and, and improvise, truly freely improvise. Uh, so the rules of the game, I'm, I have my notes here I'm looking at, but we will list them on the screen for you as well um, on the video. These are not in any particular order necessarily, but here's the things we have to adhere to for at least the first three exercises in the series that I will demonstrate for you. Number one, constant notes, okay? So you want to play constant notes and I've adapted these things over many years and tried all the different kinds of ways. So long as we know the result we're looking for, we know the skill, the core skill we're getting, we can change these things a little bit. But here's what my current version is that works for me. So you might as well follow my version unless you have an idea uh, for making sure you get the same results with your own version. I used to do constant eighth notes only, constant eighth notes, and just say, I have to play that. But I've changed it. It's way more fun to just say, okay, I have to keep playing constant notes, but they can be quarter notes, eighth notes, triplets, or 16th notes, or a combo. Okay, so you'll see in my demonstrations, I might go eighth notes and little moments of 16th or triplets in there. Really makes it much more fun because otherwise we're just going up and down the scale. So constant notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, triplets or 16th notes, and you just have to keep playing them. So no phrasing, no rests. Uh, it's going to be hard to do that, but that is the thing that we want to be doing. Uh, rule number two, you must always play by step, whole step or half step. You're only playing by step, whole step or half step. So you're going up and down scales. And when you change keys, it also has to be whole step or half step. Number three, continuous direction. You are always going one direction in the scale. You are not turning around until you get to the edge of the scale form. So when you get to the edge on the bottom or the edge on the top of the position, the actual scale shapes that we've mapped out for ourselves, that's when you turn around and otherwise you're just going one direction. So you're just going up and down and up and down and changing keys through the tune. Uh, rule number four, you can go, but you can ignore this one if it's, um, if you, do, if you want to, this is not, uh, required. This is uh, something you're allowed to do. You can go backwards by a half step and then keep going the the uh, direction you were going 
if the closest possible note when the key changes is a half step. Okay, I'll show you examples of that happening as we play. So you can go backwards by a half step if when the key changes, that going backwards from the direction you were going is the closest possible note by a half step. And then you keep going the direction you were going. It sounds very good, which is why I include it in. You're allowed to do that. It's really nice to have that in there. Um, this is not quite a rule, but this is important. If you get caught, I call this getting caught in a rut. If you get caught in a rut, which means you're playing up and down the scale, say you're doing all eighth notes. This will happen quite easily if you do only eighth notes. If you start, if you end up on the same note again at the beginning of the form and starting exactly where you started again, you do not want to do that. That's getting caught in the rut. That's starting on the same spot that you started on before, which means the pathway for where the keys change is going to be the same. And you might start memorizing that, and that's not good. That's not the practice that we want. So if you get caught in a rut, like, uh-oh, I'm starting, a form came around in the tune, and I'm playing the same note as I started on the beginning of the form last time, you want to switch up, play some triplets, play different note durations to get off from that, because you want to always be in a new place when the keys change. So you truly are practicing where those uh, keys are changing. And where the keys are changing, that's the real practice. The moment the key changes and where you are on the fretboard and where the closest possible note is for the next scale, that is the true practice item. Obviously there's other things as well, but that's the thing that matters the most. Can you just know exactly where that is? A uh, very, very important rule here. Don't look at the progression, especially if you're using what I'm gonna use in this lesson, iRoll Pro, the app, it highlights. I'll show it to you on the screen while I'm demonstrating so you know where I am. But when you are playing this, practicing this, do not look at the chords. Have them memorized. Don't, and especially don't look if it's highlighting it for you. Uh, but don't look at them at all. Just have, you can look at your guitar. Don't try to not look at your guitar unless you uh, feel comfortable doing that. Find a look at your hands. Don't look at the chord progression. Don't look at the music or the sheet music. Every time you mess up, this is the next rule. Every time you mess up, you have to, when you start again, you know, stop the backing track. If you're using a backing track, start again. And when you start again, start on a different note anywhere in the scale form that is different than where you started last time. Because again, you don't want to follow the same pathway that you did before. This will all make more and more sense as I demonstrate these things, but I have to, uh, I have to lay out the rules. You can do mordants. That's a mordant. That thing. It doesn't change anything, it just sounds nice. It's very common in music. Because otherwise you go So that's called a mordant. You can do those, they're allowed. It doesn't change up the pathway that you're on or the notes that you're playing. Uh, just a couple more things here in the rules of the game. Um, this is critical because we have to know what does it mean to get it right. You have to pass playing through the whole tune 10 times this is the hardest exercise in this whole thing, but 100% worth it. Let it take weeks on end, months on end. You're getting this core new skill that is gonna to apply to all other music you play. If you can really take this very seriously, you wanna play up and down, changing the keys, do all of these, follow all of these rules, play through the tune 10 times, doing all of that accurately. If you make a mistake, stop, start it over. If there's something really in the way from you being able to do it, at all, then you need to back up and do one of the other exercises probably, but 10 times in a row, it is worth it. It is definitely worth it. Um, and then another thing you're allowed to do is grace notes. So, but don't give chromatic notes their own rhythm. Don't give them uh, their own kind of note duration, but you can slide into notes if it's just like a quick grace note thing and that might be obvious. So those are all the rules of the game. Sounds like a lot, but once you're practicing it, it's really clear. We're just playing the scales up and down and we are changing keys right as close as we can, wherever the closest possible note is to change the key. And we keep going. We just need to do that 10 times through the tune. And it is uh, such a core ability after you can do that, uh, then we're going to let loose and play with different rhythms and phrasing and see how, wow, knowing where we are in the tune and knowing where the keys change and knowing where those connections are make everything a million times easier. So you'll see as we unlock everything, this is a big deep dive lesson. Let's go into the actual exercises and me demonstrating them for you. And we're gonna follow all those rules that I just listed out. Okay, what I'm calling exercise five because we did four exercises in the previous lesson, but we can say this is the first exercise in this uh, lesson, but we'll call it 
I labeled it as exercise five. This is out of time eighth notes. So like I said, some of these tweak the rules a little bit. For this one, we're doing out of time eighth notes. How does that make sense? Well, we are playing constant notes and we're treating them as eighth notes and we can slow down, speed up, even pause, but that means by treating them as strictly eighth notes out of time, it just means there are eight notes that we are going to play per measure. So what we wanna do is we want to go through the whole tune just like we listed out, but out of time with eighth notes only. And this is so important. This is one of the best exercises. And this is just a place we need to be for a while because the practice is that we already know how to play the scales. We did that in previous exercises. The practice is pausing at a moment where the key changes and knowing where, finding the little puzzle, the answer, the correct answer of where the next closest note is in the next key in the next scale. So how do you do out of time eighth notes? You count. Okay, we're gonna have two measures of C melodic minor. So one and two and three and four and, okay, that was one measure. And then we go one and two and three and four and, okay, that was from the lowest note to the highest note, though you can start anywhere in the scale. But I went up, continued one direction, eighth notes only out of time, one and two and three and four and, one and two and three and four and, that's two measures. Now I'm here. Where is the closest possible note continuing the same direction for the next key? Okay, so it's this big shift in view on the fretboard if we're thinking of the visual shapes or our ears if we're hearing those notes. This note right here is the continuing that same direction is the next possible note. Yes, it's in both scales, that's great. Sometimes you'll hit a note that's just the right note that's a new note, not in the previous scale. It sounds amazing, that's, <laughs> that's gonna happen a lot but don't, you don't need to force those spots. For example, this note here would be a new note in F major that is not in the previous scale, but we ended here. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, new key, okay? But you pause there and you think, where is that? And that pausing moment is the practice of this exercise. That is the thing we need to know, okay? So you need to do this a bunch until you see it and you need to get it 10 times in a row right through the entire tune. I know, that's crazy. So here we go, F major, starting here, coming down. Now I can just fly through this if I know the scale, because I'm just going up and down the scale, and I need to just fill up four measures. So I do this, one and two and three and four and 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 there I am. I did four measures, counting them to make sure, all eighth notes, four measures, that's my final note. Now I need to change to the key of E flat, the scale of E flat. Okay, well, I can still go up a note and this note is in E flat. Oh, the same changing note, totally fine. Okay, here we go down E flat. One and for three measures. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Here comes a money note. I call it a money note because going that direction, the next closest note is this. Ah, key change note. That note is not in the previous scale. This is in D flat major. And it's just the next correct note to do. Um, and it sounds great, okay? So you, you can pause as long as you want and then keep going now through the scale. Because we've already played the scales up and down. And if you can't see the scales well, you need to go back and just work on those. Uh, two measures of D flat. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, okay? One measure of C harmonic minor. We're right here, we're going this direction or down. And here is, ah, a money note. <laughs> Some, I don't know, it's not a strict rule. Sometimes I call it a money note, sometimes not, depending on how it sounds. Uh, but it is a note that is new. It's a different note. Then I'm gonna go down for one measure, C harmonic minor. One and two and three and four and. Cool, okay. Um, that is one time I have my pile of 10 picks sitting in front of me. You can use pennies, marbles, a check, uh, tallies on a piece of paper, whatever. I'm scooting that over. I went through the form one time, okay? If you're careful enough and slow enough, you could do this, let it take the time it takes and get 10 in a row because you're allowed to pause. But you can see the very important thing is finding the right answer. Okay, I was going this way. And what is the next note? We're going back to C melodic minor and I can start here. Very good that that happened. On this particular tune, this happens if you're playing strictly eighth notes with these scale forms in this position. I am now in a rut. I started the, I'm about to start again going up and it's exactly where I started last time. 
okay? So I'm going to intentionally start on a different note instead of that one so I don't get stuck in a rope. But acknowledging that that was the closest note is great. When we're playing later in time, it's not a problem because you can just do triplets for a little bit and get out of the rut, okay? So I'm gonna start on a different note and go through it again to demonstrate it one more time for you and you get the idea of this exercise. Okay, I'll just start on any note. I'm gonna start here and go up. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, okay? I just did where I highlighted there, uh, the C melodic minor. Now I have to switch to here, four measures of this. I'm just showing you for the lesson. You don't wanna be having to look at it or highlight uh, chord progressions or anything like that. I'm coming down, I'm switching to F major. This is great, I'm right here. And the next closest note is a half step away right here. And I'm gonna go down the scale of F. Four measures. One and two and three and four and 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 money note time. This is great. I'm right here. I have to go to E flat, the key of E flat, and here, half step below, note that is not in the previous uh, scale, is my root of E flat, and it's going to sound really good especially when you get in time and you hear the chords changing, it's gonna sound so good. Three measures of this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, okay? Two measures of D flat. Scratch your head, take your time. Where's the closest note? Uh, it is whole step up right here. Two measures of this, D flat major. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, Where's the closest to do one measure of this? Half step down, one and two and three and four and we are back to the beginning here, okay? Remember we started here last time and if we just follow our rules and keep going and start here instead, we're golden, we're fine, okay? So I did it twice in a row, scooting my pick over. I'm gonna do it a third time, uh, fourth time, fifth time, all the way to 10. I won't right now, you get the idea of that exercise. You wanna do 10 of those without messing up if you mess up, you start the count over and you let it take as long as you need because we need to know, imagine that, just think about how, if you don't have clarity on where the next note is when the key changes, how the heck are we gonna do it in time when the metronome is going, when the backing track is going? We need to be able to see those. So we need to just fly through the scale, stop at that spot, where's the closest note in the next scale, see that shift, practice that muscle over and over, and then we're ready for the next one. Let's do the next exercise. This is exercise six out of all the exercises, out of the two lessons. Um, this is a beast, it's so fun. Uh, it could take a long time to get down. We're gonna play in time over a backing track, any tempo. This is where all the rules we listed out apply. You can play constant notes and switch them up, triplets, uh, 16th notes, quarter notes, probably, probably eighth notes and triplets are kind of just what you want to do. I'm going to demonstrate at 120 beats per minute. Uh, I'm, I'm using the iReal Pro app. I did a video about iReal Pro, just kind of an overview of it. I'll put a link to that video in the description. Uh, this is nice because I can keep playing and I have it set for repeating 10 times. So I'm not gonna look at it because that's part of the rules. You don't wanna look at the chord progression, though I will show you the chord progression on the screen. Uh, but I won't be looking at it. I'll look here or close my eyes and it will just stop after 10. So I know that I did 10. So to test out of this, we need to be able to do it 10 times uh, in a row total and it's up and down the scales, all those rules apply. Here we go, let's give it a try. Money note, this is F major. E flat. Sounds good, right, that key change? major, E flat, E flat, D flat, very satisfying to get it. I'm 
messed up. <laughs> I kept playing the melodic minor, but I did it at least twice in a row and you get the idea. So 10 times in a row, I've tested myself out of that. I did it also before, uh, you know, in prepping for this lesson, because I just love to practice this stuff and uh, kind of sharpens up those skills, makes the next things, which is increasingly more and more our own actual music, makes them easier and easier and easier. So that is that exercise. Um, let it take as long as it needs. It's a fantastic skill to build. And I hope you see the value of how these foundational things are just, how are we going to truly freely improvise if we don't have those key changes in every moment just figured out? How can we let loose? How can we really just be playful and uh, you know hit those notes as they change within keys? We can always pl play later with going out of a key, getting weird, chromatic, stuff like that. But this is just the fundamental information that exists in the harmony of whatever tune we're trying to play. This is how I at least uh, have broken through the barriers of getting to feel like I'm actually improvising after years of not feeling that way, after years of playing the pentatonic scale here and then jumping here and then jumping here, just not ugh, not connecting, playing the same licks and stuff like that. So uh, takes the grunt work, but super worth it. Let's move on to the next exercise. Exercise seven is an exercise that I call a try this exercise. I, I put these types of lessons in my courses as well, where a bunch of really big drills and then just, hey, try this. So there's not a, there's not like a do it 10 times in a row or anything like that. It's just now that you've worked on that skill, try this uh, from having worked on that. And it's very simple. It's almost the same thing. I want you to go same direction, same rules, all of that, you know, except now we can do any phrasing we want. And it's just to test the waters a little bit. What is it like to know where we are that well and change the rhythm a little bit? Still just the scale, still in order. So it sounds like this. messed up a little bit on that, but uh, it really changes everything. It sounds, oh my gosh, that sounds like music, these moments, and then the scales come in so handy, all this scale stuff we've worked on, because in real playing, we do wanna play scale runs. Uh, in our practicing, we feel like we sound too much like scales, but once we can break up phrasing, we know exactly where we are, we can do some other stuff like maybe scale patterns, other, <laughs> other lessons that I have on that, uh, chord tones, other lessons I have on that, but uh, scale runs are just this beautiful way to fill the space, to connect, kind of, it's like a portal from one idea to another. It's just this lovely way to kind of uh, travel around and then do another statement that is more rhythmically interesting. So this, uh, I think it's really fun to just say, oh my gosh, look how this is coming together after having practicing what practiced the exercise from before. Try just mixing up the phrasing and the rhythm on that. Let's move on to the next exercise. Exercise eight is easy and fun and straightforward because it's just making sure we can play over every key just on its own looping on its own, whether you're with backing track or not. Just make sure, hey, over this, can I play in a way that I like how I sound over the one chord? I have a series on how to improvise over any chord. It's not quite about playing with the scales as much as over specific chords, but it's 12 different chord types of 12 video series. I'll put a link to that in the description playlist for it uh, because it's how we can just take one harmony and just jam over in a way that sounds good to us. So we wanna do that, make sure on each of these we can do that because think about what we're pasting together here. If you can sound good in each segment of the piece in the song that is one key and you can feel like, yeah, I'm feeling good about that. Well, then all we need is those moments that change the keys. And that's what we've thoroughly practiced already. So we're just making sure we can sound good, not just up and down scales, anything we want to sound like, the phrasing, mixing up the notes, one uh, key center as a, at a time. And then we're going to connect it all together and we're truly doing it. We're truly improvising after that. So I'll just loop these two measures and...
whatever, just make sure you can play around with it, right? Sound like you, you don't have to sound like me. I have my own goals for, you know, my own sound and it's a pretty clean, pretty straightforward kind of thing. But anything you sound like, just be like, yeah, I'm jamming on this. I know where I am on this, on this, uh, in this key center. So like the next would just be F major and you don't have to play nailing each chord perfectly. That's, that's coming up in a couple future videos. But just make sure you can play with the scale. And if you want to do other stuff during this and get more chromatic with it or or whatever, just make sure you feel good about being on that key, that key center, that scale. Then it's all about connecting them. That's what we're going to do next. And then we're truly doing it. We've arrived. We're improvising and I'll have a few thoughts about where to go next after that, but let's do the last exercise here. All right, this is exercise nine. This is what I call the you're doing it exercise. You're doing it, multiple exclamation marks, because this is that end goal. And we can always, from here, we can work on sounding better, finding our own voice, adding chromatics, getting weird, getting more specific to chord tones, but just keep the goal in mind right now where we're at. Are we playing the right key at the right time, the right scale at the right time? Are we changing keys when they change and seeing them? And are we playing at least some phrasing and you know palatable things that we like? We are doing it, we have arrived, and we can grow from there. So you wanna get 10 times through the tune accurately playing whatever you want, any phrasing, any note order, whatever, but make sure you're playing within the right scale at the right time. It can sound like whatever. We're working on accuracy. the idea that's a few times through I couldn't help myself just was playing um, and it feels like yes I'm improvising I'm playing over the tune do I want to sound better yes do are the things I want to work on yes but I am playing things and and it's connecting for me I feel like I'm in the song um, and I could just got to the point through doing all those exercises where it feels like I could just do that for uh, hours you know and we're still going to get annoyed with our playing we're still going to find our limitations uh, and that we build from there but do you, I hope you see how getting to that point is kind of the jumping off point we all want to be at. Then you can work on how you want to sound, what you know, what your vibe is and all that stuff. But the keys are changing. The tune is what it is. The harmony is what it is. Do we know how to navigate it at the most basic level? That's what we're working on here. So that is the you're doing it exercise. Uh, just a couple more things here in this lesson, including the bonus tips coming up in a second that you don't want to miss. What I'm calling exercise 10, really just the last thing to do after doing all of that is go back to the melody and revisit it in that scale position area that you've worked through everything. And you're going to see the melody in a new way because the melody is using the same key centers that we have just studied inside and out. Oh, no way. Okay, yes, obviously that's part of the C melodic minor. Okay. Oh, that's the key change spot. That's a money note right there. That switches to the F major scale. A little chromatic thing there. I'm playing around on the third of F major. In F major. Money note. Key change. Now we're in E flat. And then key change. Oh. Oh. Very clearly. Uh, very clearly from working through everything, all the exercises in this series, 
that's just crystal clear to me where in the scale that melody is coming from. It's going to help me just know the melody better and remember it longer, hear it better, sing it better. Yeah, it makes perfect sense where it is from everything we just studied. And then, oh, that's just C harmonic minor from off the two. Like, wow, the, the melody makes so much more sense now. I've just in, so we got to make sure we go back and just replug the melody into the environment that we just um, shined all that light on, right? We have all this clarity now. Make sure you're still studying the tune itself and the melody. Uh, it will make it more fun. You'll feel like you're playing a real song. Uh, so that is exercise 10. Uh, bonus tips coming up here. Before I give you the two bonus tips, really important ones. Uh, if you need scale diagrams to work out your scales, I have a free scale diagram pack. It's called my printable parent scales PDF. And it has all the parent scales, which means that all the modes come from those scales, all the most important scales to play for the guitar laid out with scale diagrams, just like you've seen the diagrams in this lesson series, uh, five positions or the amount of positions and forms and shapes that each scale has everywhere on the neck of the guitar, all the things to practice up and down. You can use them to find any of these scale shapes you need for this type of exercise series. You can get that PDF for free with the link in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash scales. Here's bonus tip number one. This is really important stuff. Do this is how you, you don't, you don't want to fall into this trap, which is getting in the ruts. We talked about getting in the ruts. So, do not, even though you know, even though our, 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 I already said, don't get in the ruts, don't play the same uh, thing over and over. Do not play the same path. Do not start memorizing a path of notes, a series of notes through this whole exercise series. These exercises where we're fine, starting on a different note and then finding where the key changes. Do not memorize how it goes. If you do that, you are literally not practicing the thing that we're trying to work on. You are not practicing improvisation. If you start on this note every time, and you just get used to that and say, oh, I'm going to do that again, and then change that. I've seen this happen from teaching private lessons over and over and over again. People come back. They drill the exercises so hard. Very good students. And they just practiced it in even a number of ways that they're memorizing. We do not want to do that. So switch it up as much as possible so you're actually thinking of new scale, new key, where is the closest note, and I guess in a way we're memorizing where every single one of those spots are, but to practice them, we have to have it be mixed up. It's like a flashcard thing. You need to uh, have to every time say, where is that note? And not have it be a whole string of notes that you've done. So don't get in the rut and do not memorize any series of notes and series of lines and series of key changes. Then you're just working on one giant lick. It's not going to help you at all with playing real music. Okay, so that's bonus tip number one. Bonus tip number two. Bonus tip number two, this is for getting started from the ground up. If this feels intimidating, sure, I'm sure it does. Uh, it does for me too. That's why I try to break things down with step by step by step this in this exercise. But if it still feels intimidating, we need to stretch out and make baby steps and stepping stones within one exercise. And one of the best ways to do this with improvisation is to work on only a few strings at a time within the same position. Two strings at a time I think is the best, and the middle two strings are a great starting point that I like to demonstrate. So I'll jump to just improvising with the middle two strings only, strings four and three on the guitar in the same scale position and playing with all the correct scale notes as the keys change, but just on those two strings. If you feel like working on the whole scale form is too hard to see the shift, uh, it can be really, really enjoyable to just work on two strings at a time, or three, or even one. But here's what that will sound like over the tune. Just the middle two strings. I'm on F major scale. E flat now. Thank you. 
idea. That's just me playing basically the final step, but with only two strings. You can do every single step. Can I just play the scales up and down? Can I map it out? Can I do it out of time? Can I see the scales change on two strings at a time, three strings at a time, that kind of thing. If you feel good about doing all six strings, you don't need to do that, but it can be a fun way to test yourself or take a baby step, work on it very slowly over time. Uh, so just wanted to give you that bonus tip for getting started if you need it. So you might be thinking, this is all great. I can't wait to do this on a bunch of tunes and, and really dig into this, but how do I know what scales I'm supposed to play over what chords? Well, that is what I'm gonna cover in my next tutorial. We're gonna do a deep dive. In my next video next week, I post a lesson video every single week. I'm going to walk through every chord type and every situation where we might need to decipher what is the scale we need in this collection of chords or this type of chord and when and why and how so you can have some solid information to figure out the scales you need to work on for any progression so that's what we're going to do in the next video i hope to see you there thank you so much for watching uh, let me know what you thought in the comments take care and happy practicing